welcome to the conversation on big cats dr bhatta i met dr bhatta many many years ago when i first went to nepal and started a little bit of work there with tiger conservation at that time he was with the government of nepal and then later he got involved with the the rai arc landscape project which became uh, one of the most important projects for, uh, for conservation of tigers across landscapes um it's a pleasure to reconnect with you after so many years dr bhatta and i'm really looking forward to your presentation so please tell us a little bit about what you've been involved in what you're working on and uh, wwf nepal is doing with tiger conservation thank you ratika it's great pleasure to see you again and to you know uh, tell about what nepal is doing and what uh, we actually uh, wwf is supporting the government of nepal uh, for tiger conservation thank you so i will have a very brief uh, talk today and it will be basically on how nepal is managing the tiger conservation the goal of uh, doubling the tiger in nepal Uh, from actually 2010 onwards okay it's basically uh, i'll uh, you know start how uh, nepal is working from the uh, government and communities and actually the ngos like uh, wwf in in nepal and basically uh, it's a very much a concentrated effort that we have uh, ensured that there is a institution at all level that look after different aspect of tiger conservation uh, not only the wildlife crime but all overall policy to grassroots level so there is a committee chaired by the prime minister where we have all concerned like home minister defense minister forest minister in board so that they can ensure tiger conservation from their behalf in the same way where the minister chairs wildlife crime control coordination committee all the concerned secretaries are there on the board and the chief of all enforcement agencies nepal police nepal army armed police force all are in that committee so uh, likewise we have community based enterprising on the ground so that the community youths are also engaged for tiger conservation so in a way we have a very good uh, uh, policy to people or we we call people to prime minister institutions to ensure tiger conservation so uh, not only uh, these uh, enforcement institution can work uh, we cannot ensure unless there is a full engagement of local communities who actually depend on those natural resources who actually uh, are residing along those habitats so the the government have provision that the buffer zone residents will receive 50% up to 50% of the park revenue for their development that's one very good aspect and the community forest forest of the buffer zone or critical corridors have been handed over to the communities so that they manage those resources they have full right to use those resources sell those products use the revenue of those resources so when they are getting full benefit they are managing their resources they are fully engaged uh, for the conservation initiative including tiger conservation and if you talk of the institution only in the in the tiger bearing protected areas and critical corridors we have more than 6000 community institutions so they look after different aspect some they are just for raising awareness some they are actually do some actions like i mentioned community forest users group they plan for the we uh, are a forest passage they use uh, them they manage them and there are some dedicated for anti poaching efforts community based anti poaching efforts some are other institutions uh, so that they have full ownership and there has been a very good trust between the government and the local institutions for these initiatives and 
besides those um, community institutions they have small sub functional groups as well so there are eco clubs in schools some are anti poaching some reserve river rangers citizen scientists who actually do tiger monitoring or uh, prey based monitoring or other some scientific support to the community institutions and the green generation actually this is a these institutions are basically to ensure to sustain the conservation efforts in nepal because these are all these are youths so these youths will ensure current effort and take to the next generation so likewise uh, definitely those people uh, would like to see conservation benefits so if they realize conservation benefits what they tell us that if we see conservation benefit we ourselves can sustain these initiatives ensure conservation and we can fully engage on them so they are doing lot of uh, green enterprises or uh, homestay tourism or some other initiatives so that these uh, local indigenous community mostly in our protected areas in tiger bearing in protected areas most people are local indigenous community so they are doing their best efforts putting their best efforts to get conservation benefit uh, once they have ensured they have secured their habitat they have protected wildlife so they are trying to get a lot other benefits so uh, we are very small country nepal is very small so our target is also 250 tiger is our double target we had 120 tigers in 2010 so our target is 250 in 2022 we are very close to uh, doubling the tiger we hope we will achieve this uh, target and these all efforts in nepal actually as i mentioned earlier government of nepal is leading conservation organization like us are supporting them and the community local community are actually very proactively working on the ground so communities government and ngos partnership actually is a key to success of all these conservation efforts in nepal with this uh, i close my brief talk if you have any questions please so uh, bhatta ji tell us some of the you know greatest successes in communities and uh, tiger conservation have been seen in nepal yes. um can you give us some examples of these please well uh, tiger if you take the case of bardia national park itself mm -hmm. uh, tiger population went down to 18 tigers in in 2009 after the insurgency and the critical corridors linking katanya ghat wildlife sanctuary india and nepal was almost you know very severely degraded so with the community and government and this ngo partnership the tiger population have gone 78 now in 2018 and of these 32 tigers are moving through that uh, khata corridor to katanya ghat wildlife sanctuary so the community have also secured the very much critical corridors and they have established homestay there they are fully engaged and all the tiger monitoring work in khata corridor is being done by community youths fantastic and uh, so tell us how much difference has it made to the economy of the region by having uh, locals in you know having homestays and uh, doing other things connected with tourism and now the important question is with the covid situation with tourism going less what impacts will that have will the people continue to wait will they have the patience or will it in lead to uh, people again reacting to wildlife presence 
this very very good question and very uh, you know the tourism was main industry for nepal you know so we have a lot of uh, visitors from abroad even domestic tourism was going very fast in nepal uh, Bardia was speaking almost 40 ever 40% of the visitors used to see tiger in Bardia. The last year's yes, Bardia was quite high and Chiton as well so there are a lot of tourists but after covid situation the revenue of the park has gone down the homestay business is almost closed job you can uh, understand job of thousands of those engaged in tourism business are jobless so no income and there are little pressure now because of that people are now entering the park and corridors to earn you know they may use forest resources so there is a big threat in in one side and how to boost up economy again how to engage those how to you know revive those uh, home stays is a big challenge for us so we are thinking to revive them at least to support them so that they can uh, they will not uh, you know go to normal but they can use with some safety measures uh, we we can promote domestic tourism so we are talking to the government we are talking to our partners that we should put our best effort so uh, bhatta ji also going to other species uh, because with nepal we've talked a lot about the tigers what is happening to leopard populations now that your tiger populations are rising because in india we find when there are lot of tigers the leopard pop, you know is is uh, affected by that uh, we don't have a simultaneous increase in both so what is what is the news on your leopards well in in tiger bearing protected areas i cannot say for sure but in mountains leopard population is growing uh through the mountains of nepal so there are a lot of leopard human conflict cases in nepal even in kathmandu valley around sigopuri national park and around the all other forest we have the leopard population is growing well but i i actually cannot say about the tiger areas okay okay you don't have uh, and uh, can you also tell us uh, from your experience in the in the government uh, you've done a lot of ex- absolutely fantastic work for rhino conservation in nepal and the rhino conservation and tiger conservation areas have been overlapping for a l- large part with this increase in tiger populations has it helped the rhino populations also what is happening rhino population also is equally growing with tiger population that uh, that is very clear from the rhino census so uh, but actually i am not very much aware of their interaction actually but the population of both of them is increasing is both both are increasing yeah okay so a lot of trouble was also caused by my uh, elephants moving between nepal and india you know and that is a big issue so what are you doing about situations like that what is happening on that front that's very one of the big challenge for us because uh, actually nepal's forest is now not enough for elephants except bardia bardia because of the bogai valley we have a very one pristine bogai valley so that they can use that valley they can frequently move to kasanya ghat well while left sanctuary as well but in other areas in chiton parsa it's getting big problem so there are a lot of uh, human uh, elephant conflict cases also uh, some you know more than by elephant alone more than uh, 70 80 people have been affected in last 20 years in in that area wow wow that's that's huge um what is nepal preparing to do for the 2022 year of the tiger what is happening well we are putting our effort to double the number that's our main 
the target for now and other things definitely we will be you know we will be joining the all or you know there will be ministerial meeting there will be again summit in russia so nepal will definitely participate all those meetings we should do a, a special wildlife tourism year in nepal for 2022 now that this year couldn't happen that yeah, that we should plan for actually that would be a good <laughs> idea for nepal good idea Just, thank you thank yes, you for wildlife tourism for <laughs> nepal wildlife yes. tourism year of nepal because uh, it's it would just be the perfect thing and by 2022 hopefully uh, we will be coming out of the covid situation yeah 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 so wonderful um, really really nice talking to you and if if there are any follow up questions that anybody will have i will email them to you and be in touch and uh, okay. please stay in touch and it would just be really good to maintain this contact all right bhatta ji thank you so thank much you. namaskar thank you. namaskar Scott. Right now, during the COVID situation, we had two or three projects. One was the most important; it's called a tippy tap.